Hey guys, Ray from Whimsical Pictures here, bringing you the first manga haul I've done in a long while. Uh, now that I've finally gotten enough books and such together to justify making a haul, and enough time to put a haul video together, uh, thanks for bearing with me, all of y'all. Uh, once again, this is all gonna be, uh, Japanese products and Japanese books. Um, I'm sorry if, uh, that doesn't interest you. That's fine. I totally understand. Uh, feel free to skip this one. But, uh, for the rest of you, I've got some stuff here that I am very, very excited about. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So first, after a long while, um, I do have, uh, the other half to my Yuri on Ice Nendoroids which is Victor, and I currently have him posed with uh, Yuri and Makachin up on the shelf. He's so adorable. Of course, I have him with the best facial expression that they gave him, which is this little heart-shaped mouth of his. Um, so cute. So, so cute. Yeah, I'm so happy with him. And I'm happy that I finally have the two of them together. Um, I really, really loved Yuri on Ice. It meant a lot to me, uh, personally. And I really love those characters, so... I'm happy to have them in adorable figure form. Uh, the next thing I got is a really exciting find from an antique shop here in town. Um, probably exciting to me and, like three other people who watch my videos, but that's okay. <laughs> it's super exciting. Just trust me. <laughs> and that is this, uh, original 1938, uh, print of an illustration by Junichi Nakahara. Uh, one of the grandfathers of shoujo manga and the shoujo sort of aesthetic. Um, of course, early shoujo mangaka like Makoto Takahashi, Osamu Tezuka, um, Hideki, Hideko Mizuno, and the like, all sort of inspired by this aesthetic that came about because of illustrators like uh, Yumeji, uh, Takabatake, and later Nakahara. Um, I love his style. It's so, like, high kata, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, beautiful and elegant and, like, fashionable. Um, the only thing that would make this more my aesthetic is if this illustration was, like, two of his girls in, like, a class S romance, and one of them is, like, in a kimono and the other one's, like, a western-style moga. <sighs> but, uh... Yeah, this is so beautiful. I'll show you some of the details. It's a little worse for wear, and of course it was originally the cover of a book. It seems to be a collection of perhaps Class S style stories, since it talks about um, girls' letters collection. Uh, but yeah, so this is torn off from the book, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, I was so happy to find this. This is a dream entry into my personal collection. Um, just an original illustration from one of my favorite illustrators of all time, so very happy to have this. Obviously, I framed it, um, and put it on my wall, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, because I'm a nerd. So, I guess next I'll show you the other, like, old-fashioned shoujo forefathers thing that I found. This I found at Book Off for like eight dollars, I think. Um, a steal. This is Makoto's Princesses. Makoto meaning Makoto uh, Takahashi, the mangaka and illustrator. So this is specifically illustrations from his princess stories. So here we've got Cinderella, 
Um, my personal favorite is the ones that he did. This one's gorgeous. That's stunning. My personal favorites are the ones that he did for The Little Mermaid. Um, I would love to get my hands on a copy of his illustrated version of The Little Mermaid. Um, and maybe I will try to do that eventually, but finding this for so cheap, just like randomly, was absolutely amazing. He is like one of my absolute favorite illustrators. His drawings just like exemplify what Shoujo is to me. Um, and the detail in them is so incredible. The sort of like decorative quality of his artwork. And you can see like how much influence his illustrations had in later Shoujo manga. So yeah, it's just <laughs> so so good. So good. Um, and I'm really happy to have it. Uh, the last two non-manga things I wanted to show are things that, uh, they're prose novels, both middle grade, but I thought they might interest my particular audience, so. The first one was inspired by uh, meeting a fellow fan of these books among my middle school students. I have since met several more who are also obsessed with these books, which, you know, hey kids, join the club. <laughs> uh, but I decided to pick this up in Japanese and read it, and it's been very enjoyable because this is, like, the exact level that I'm at right now, so, like, you know, it's, like, it's challenging, but it's not super frustrating to get through. Um, and that is The Lightning Thief from uh, the first book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. Percy Jackson to Olympus no Kamigami. Nusumareta Lightning Bolt. So, yeah. Uh, just really enjoying it. Um, and enjoying sort of reliving my own middle school days. Um, the other one I grabbed, which I will get to after I finish The Lightning Thief, um, is number six, the first one by, uh, Atsuko Asano. There are nine of these, so if I enjoy the first one, which I'm sure I will, because I love the manga and the anime, um, but if I enjoy that, I'll pick up the next one. Um, buying these new is a bit expensive because I, uh, I go to the Junkudo up here and everything's kind of marked up, but... Um, I guess this one wasn't so bad, like 10 bucks. This one was a monster price, $20. But yeah, so if I end up enjoying this one, which I sure I will, I'm sure I will, I will pick up the next one. Um, if you didn't know, this is like a dystopian YA title that was made into an anime and a manga. Um, it often gets sort of mislabeled as a light novel, but it's not sold as a light novel. If it was, it wouldn't be at the Junkudo because they don't sell light novels or manga there. Um, but they do have quite a large middle grade and YA section, and this was there. Um, it is, uh, yeah, like I said, like a dystopian sci-fi story, uh, centering a queer romance, which is super nice. In the manga, at least, I found the romance to be, like, the most compelling part. Um, it's not bringing a ton new to the table, sci-fi, like, concept-wise, uh, but the character writing was really strong, and, you know, it has a nice, like, exciting pace and progression. The main issue with both the manga and the anime is the rushed pacing, because it's adapting, like, nine novels into nine manga volumes, so I'm excited to read them in their original form. Um... And then finally, we'll get into manga. First, I just have a couple of pickups from um, Book Off. Most of these are from Book Off. Uh, yeah, all but one. So maybe I should start with the one I didn't get from Book Off. I'm dropping everything. Uh, this was from Villa Van, uh, Village Vanguard, which is like a Hot Topic, Spencer's like youth type store, but they also sell a bunch of like alternative type manga. 
This is a one shot by Yoko Kondo. Uh, the reason I got it was, of course, because it's gorgeous, <laughs> but also because it was published by Comic Beam, uh, which ran Wandering Sun, among other very interesting titles. So, stunning cover. This is called Mizu no Hebi, uh, The Water Snake. And actually, if you take the book jacket off, it's gorgeous underneath as well. Um, the silver here is like metallic. I don't know if you can see that, but that's true in here as well. Just a beautifully designed book. Um, if I remember right, I took off the obi that had like the description of what this is about, but if I remember right, this is about a woman uh, remembering the summer she spent with her cousin when they were like teenagers. And what I really think is interesting here is that as the book sort of goes along, it goes through all kinds of, like, essentially all the decades of shoujo manga style, shoujo and jose manga. So this one very much, at the beginning, very much looks like a sort of 70s style comic with all the flowers and the big eyes. Um, and the character designs being very reminiscent of that. And then it sort of goes into more of an 80s style show like a you can see it in sort of the way the faces are drawn and sort of as it goes the style changes to reflect the time um and I'm very interested to read this uh so yeah beautiful I definitely want to read more like weird one shots <laughs> Um, yeah. This one is by Akiko Higashimura. Um, this I got used for like a dollar. Um, volume one of Bishoku Tante, which sounds exactly up my alley because it's by Higashimura, who I love, and I wanted to try more stuff by her, but also because it's called Gourmet Detective, and it's about this guy who solves mysteries relating to, like, gourmet food. So it's like a mystery manga, like a whodunit, combined with, like, a foodie manga, and those are two of my favorite things, so. Um, I haven't gotten to this one either because I have been focusing on prose, but, yeah. Definitely will be looking for more of that series. Uh, this one is just a collection of Detective Conan stories. I do love Detective Conan, I just have never owned any of it, but I've read, like, everything that's been released in English, so, which pales in comparison to what's been released in Japanese, but, you know, they're still chugging along with those releases. This little collection, like, these little collections of the stories are, like, much more convenient for me and my particular way of devouring Conan stories uh, than just buying volume after volume of it. Um, and this one is winter-themed. It's part of the new seasonal collections. Um, and this has three winter-themed Conan stories. And I really liked that idea because I do love reading a good, like, cozy winter-themed mystery around this time of year. So, yeah. <laughs> and again, that was like one dollar, so. Not breaking the bank with any of these. <laughs> um... Also from Book Off, we have volumes one and three of a Chiho Saito manga from the 90s, uh, Ice Forest. I had no idea she had done like a figure skating manga. Um, it looks perfectly melodramatic, <laughs> as I would expect. So I'm putting this one off until I get volume two, but um, Obviously, with the Yuri on Ice thing, I'm on a bit of a figure skating kick right now. So, I am excited to read this. Um, and read more from Chiho Saito, who, of course, is known in the West primarily for illustrating Revolutionary Girl Utena, but was very, very prolific, still is, very prolific in manga. So, yeah.
these ran in flowers. Uh, which was probably the reason I found them, because I always look in the flowers section. Uh, because that's where most of Motohagio's stuff was published, and I'm predictable. Okay, the last thing I got is a set of five Bunko editions. Um, which I believe completes this edition, which is kind of weird because I don't think it covers the whole story. But this is the Bunko set, Bunko, Bunko Ban set of the Rose of Versailles, Berusayu no Bara, very famous. Um, again, I really like these Bunko editions because they're tiny, but they really don't skimp on quality too much. Um, these in particular are quite gorgeous. Uh, let's see that. Side. And that gorgeous Ryoko Ikeda art. All the covers are gorgeous and like total aesthetic. Uh, if you don't know, this was a hugely influential and popular uh, shoujo historical epic that ran in the 1970s. It got an anime, it got a Takarazuka play, which is now like Takarazuka's main thing. <laughs> One of the biggest things that they're known for is their production of the Rose of Versailles. Um, and it's great. It's about the French Revolution. And the cross-dressing heroine, Lady Oscar, is dashing and interesting and amazing. And I want to marry her. <laughs> So that's that. Uh, I'm really happy to own The Rose of Versailles in some form. Still hoping for Udon Entertainment to get their stuff together and publish the series in English, but uh, since that may never happen, uh, now that I own it in Japanese, I'm very happy. And I got all five of these for 500 yen, so again, I didn't break the bank with any of these. Um, so. Yeah, if you're paying, like, normal English language manga prices for Japanese language manga, you're getting ripped off by a scalper, by the way. Um, like, the initial price of this Bunko edition, this omnibus, is, like, 600 yen. So, I mean, single volumes, they're getting more expensive, but, like, if you're paying more than 600 yen for a j volume of Japanese manga plus shipping, you're not getting a deal. You're being ripped off. Um, manga is very cheap here. So, yeah. <laughs> um, of course, you know, the shipping, you have to factor into that. If you're paying $10 for a volume, but you're paying nothing for shipping, then that might be worth it, but you have to decide that for yourself, you know. Uh, so that's everything that I have gotten in the last few months, um, since whenever my last uh, manga haul was some very exciting things in there for my vintage shoujo loving heart um, and things that I'm very eager to get to so yeah <laughs> see you whenever my next video is I'm gonna stop making promises <laughs> um, and until then happy reading guys